Welcome again this morning to the virtual service coming to you from the heart of the Fens in Whittlesea Christian Church. We're happy you're joining us, whether that's part of our church family or whether you're joining us from different parts of the country or even the world through the Facebook Live. We trust that you will be blessed. We trust that you will enjoy and enter into the singing. And so, congregation, worship as though you were here. And we want to enjoy the presence of God. There's a great song that we're starting with. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What a powerful way to start the service. And we're going to pray and ask God to bless those who are struggling against things they don't feel they can control. Father, we want to thank you that your promise remains the same, that we, through you, are able to do everything in your name. And so I pray, Father, that this morning those who are struggling under weights they feel they can't uh, sustain, I pray, Father, that there will be a lifting in their spirit, that there will be a rising up in their faith and that they will begin to see that they can, through your grace, through your strength, regain control of their lives, their future and their past and present. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship the Lord. Do all things through Christ, through Christ who strengthens me. He has opened up my heart and now I see. For I read the word of God and his spirit spoke to me. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ has set you free. His love has strengthened me, hallelujah, hallelujah, I will praise His name, for in His life I see a brighter day, and in my heart I know that I am changed, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, He has opened up my Heart and now I see, for I read the word of God, and His Spirit spoke to me. You can do all things through Christ who set you free. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ has set you free. Hallelujah, hallelujah, His love has strengthened me. Hallelujah. I will praise his name For in his life I see a brighter day And in my heart I know that I am changed I can do all things through Christ who yes, we can. me He has opened up my heart and now I see Spirit spoke to me. You can do all things through Christ. I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He has opened up my heart and now I see. For I've read the word of God and His Spirit spoke to me. You can do all things through Christ who set you free. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ has set you free. Hallelujah, hallelujah, His love has strengthened me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I will praise His name. For in His light I see a brighter day. Hallelujah, hallelujah, 
made possible because we have the name of Jesus that we can use no matter what your circumstances this morning the Bible says that we can come to the Father in Jesus name and he will give us the desires of our heart
have the power to change our lives. The grace in the Spirit's wise. Of high on the cross, you pay the cost. The ultimate sacrifice. Your love can melt the hardest heart. Revival is here at last. We sing to your name. God is unstoppable, my God is unstoppable. Oh, things that make possible, God is unstoppable. Oh, things that make possible, God is unstoppable, my God is unstoppable. That a great song? Hey, when God starts to move, nothing, nothing can stop him. Let's slow the pace down as we come to another beautiful devotional song. I stand in awe of you. Do you know I remember when this song came? I was imagining what would heaven be like when we first, that first moment, we gathered around the throne and we saw our Savior in reality. What we had believed by faith suddenly became sight. I have a strange feeling that we just want to stand there in awe at His majesty, His glory, his splendor. Don't be afraid to stand up, raise your hands, and just worship the Lord as we sing this. I stand, I now 
Father, our hearts this morning are overwhelmed by your word that tells us that you are a faithful God and your faithfulness will cause your word to be fulfilled in our lives this morning and every prayer that has risen from hearts wherever they are this morning let the day produce answers and a God who cares and loves and honors his word Amen Well, yet another week has come and gone, and another one is yet to start. And this morning, I, I know that one or two of our congregation, and I suppose uh, throughout the nation, uh, has been trying to make top and the tails of um, what the very, very brief announcement was that up to 30 people could gather uh, to worship. Uh, try as I may. Uh, and I, I must confess that I am very sceptical when politicians make uh, headline announcements, but there's very little uh, real information. Uh, that always tells me that uh, the devil is in the detail, if we can find it. And I've tried to make head and tail of this, and, and I'm struggling. I've gone on the government website, and there seems to be very little information that is current to 
the fact that we could gather together uh, starting uh, next week. Uh, and so, unfortunately, the state of play for our congregation uh, is that until we can find out exactly, uh, there's many rumors that are floating around. Some people are saying that we're all going to have to wear masks, there are going to be no singing and uh, no uh, platform-led singing unless we have a uh, perspex sheeting across the platform. Um, there can be no tea, and uh, which means no fellowship afterwards. Uh, we have to abide by social distancing. Uh, and so when you strip, if that is true, then when you strip all the things uh, out of our service, uh, then we haven't got very much left. But we do want to hear. Now, please, I trust that you will uh, respond to this. Uh, we do want to hear via email or text, please, via email or text. Uh, that's the quickest way and the most secure way of getting to us in the office, uh, email or text. And because there has been so much fear created uh, in this time, that people will be afraid, even though they may be able to, uh, people will be afraid to venture out, as they indeed are afraid to even get on public transport around here. Um, but So we need to know uh, what your feeling is once we can find the information that we need to have before we can open. Uh, we are going to require, when that happens, we're going to require people to volunteer to help to make the building sanitized and ready. But we're also going to need people to help after the meeting has happened to also sanitize the building again. Uh, and so there's a lot of work that Will go, is going to have to happen uh, for that to take place. But let me tell you uh, what I've picked up so far. The, the only thing I can find has to do, uh, in detail, has to do with the announcement made a couple of weeks ago where churches could open for personal prayer. What I can find and did find is this statement. No place of worship will be able to open before a final decision by the government and accompanying change to the legal position in the published regulations. And I can find nothing in their published regulations on the COVID site. The following exam activities are examples of what is not currently permitted within a place of worship. It is encouraged that services continue to take place online wherever possible. Corporate worship led by a minister, even song, informal prayer meetings, services other than funerals, study groups, out-of-school settings such as Sunday schools. It is strongly advised that activities such as singing or playing instruments should be avoided. The government continues to work on scientific and medical advice. Further advice and guidance will follow. No drinks could be served. We may be required to social distance and no close fellowship. And so that seems to be all, uh, but that is not necessarily specific to the announcement made on Monday. And it's led to a lot of confusion. But rest assured that uh, your leadership is, is wanting to see a restoring back to the times when we can meet. But we must make sure that we are abiding by safety. We must make sure that we are abiding by regulations uh, once we can find those regulations. Now, again, please help us. If some of you internet buffs happen to stumble uh, across the government site, 
uh, that is giving information concerning uh, the meeting together for worship. Concerning that, if you can find that site, could you please uh, email me and send me the link to it so that I can have a look at it. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but um, uh, there w we will not be gathering together uh, next week because even if I found something out this week, uh, it would be extremely difficult to get everything in place ready uh, for that uh, to happen on next Sunday. But we pray and long for the moment that we can gather together again, don't we? This is a long period and our hearts yearn to be together. But thankfully, we can still continue to love and bless each other. Now, just before I hand over to Richard, um, th there's a phrase that I couldn't get off my mind. And as we were worshipping God, just as we began to worship God, I, I felt that same kind of impetus come. And it's a verse that began the move of the Holy Spirit and the birth of the New Testament church. It said, and as they were gathered in the upper room, suddenly, suddenly, there came a sound from heaven. And you know, I began to ponder on the sudden interventions of God. I've been fortunate and blessed to be in a number of significant moves of God in my 50 years of ministry. And you know, it's amazing how that they began suddenly. A lot of preparation went on behind the scenes and nothing seemed to happen. And God seemed to be not answering prayer. But then suddenly, one moment, it wasn't there. And the next moment it was. And I want to encourage you, those of you that feel you have been praying for so long and, and it doesn't seem God is hearing you. That's the time that you need to hold on to the Word of God. If we pray anything according to the will of God. Now, if you're praying that God will make you a multimillionaire so that you can blow it all on stupid things, then, then of course, you know, you're going to struggle finding that in the will of God for us, aren't you? But if, you're, if your prayer and desire can be found in the heart of God for His people, then God said, we know that if we ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears us. And if he hears us, we have the request we have asked of him. Don't give up hope. I want to, I want to inspire you. Don't give up hope. The 120 were in fear of the of what was happening with the Jews and the Romans after Jesus had been crucified and risen from the dead. But suddenly, a boldness hit them. Suddenly, the Spirit of God came. And I want to assure you that there'll be a moment when that which is bothering you right now will suddenly go. And you will look back and you will see that there was a divine purpose in why you went through what you did. So God bless you this morning. And Richard is coming right now to bless us with the word. Bless you, Richard. Looking forward to hearing it. Praise God. I just had on my, a heart, my heart for this morning about the promises in the Word of God. I called it the power of the Word. The power of the Word. 
you know, I was struck, I've been struck about the, how complete the Bible is. Um, and I was thinking, you know, Jesus d didn't say anything that didn't need saying, but he made sure to say everything that needed to be said. You know, when Jesus went back um, to be with the Father, he wasn't thinking, oh, I wish I'd said that. Oh, I never thought of that. But, you know, when you read the Bible, it's got an answer for everything, hasn't it? The, the Word of God is just amazing. So, when we read the Word of God, and we hear the Word of God, you know, we should, we should take notice. Because those things happened uh, for a reason. Those things that were said were said for a reason. It's not it's not just a notional thing. Uh, we need to, to do something with it. You know, Numbers chapter 3, in Numbers chapter 3 and, and verse 23, Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19, it says, God, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should renege on his word. Has he said, and he will not do? Or has he spoken, and will he, will he not make it good? Do you know, God is faithful to, it, to his word, isn't he? Um, we can rely on the Bible. Um, do you know, when you, if you make a major purchase, perhaps you're buying a car, you know, you kind of expect it to work, don't you? Um, if you invest... Part of uh, your income, and you've worked for it. You, you you want it. You want it to work, and so you want a guarantee, don't you? That when you're making a big purchase, you want a, a cast iron guarantee that it'll do what it's supposed to do, or it will be fixed. But at the same time, with that guarantee. There's instructions, isn't there? It comes with instructions. You have to look after it. Uh, you can't neglect it. It's got to be serviced. And you know, it was just it just struck me that God's God's word is like that. It, it's a it's a contract. God's made a, uh, a covenant. The Bible calls it. It's a contract with us that if we follow the instructions to His His word, it will work. It will work. You know, the Almighty God is behind His His word. This is His word, and it's going to work if we follow the instructions. If we do our our bit, there's an advert, isn't there? They used that used to used to go out that it this product does what it it says on the tin, and you know the Bible does what it says. And you know, it's just striking me in this time, these days that we're moving into, as Brian was sharing that. It's going to suddenly come to pass. You know, we need to be doing, doing business with the authority um, of the word of God as, as he has given it to us. But I was thinking, it's up to us. You know, God has delegated his authority. It's amazing to think. He's entrusted his authority, his word with us to, to act upon it, to understand it, and to put it into practice. So I wanted to share some thoughts this morning with you on the, the power of the word, the power of the word. Do you know, it says in John chapter one, the early part of John chapter one, talks about Jesus, the, the, the word being the name of Jesus. It says John chapter one, verses one and two. It says, in the beginning, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And in verse 14 it says, John chapter 1, 14, and the Word became flesh, the Word became a human being, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So that the word was actually a title um, for, for Christ, for Jesus, 
in the gospel, in, in this gospel. And it's talking in reference to the, the message of the revelation of God. So it's, it's a, the word is a revelation of a message from God to, to you and me and, and to all, all of mankind. So I wanted to share uh, three or four different aspects of the power of the word and um, that God has entrusted to us. Different aspects about the word and what we need to get from it, what we need from it and what we need to do with it. So the first thing is we need, we need revelation. We need revelation from the word. So this is coming from Matthew chapter 16, Matthew 16 and verses 15 to 19. And this was the early part of uh, Jesus' ministry uh, on the earth with the, with the disciples, with him. And he was teaching the disciples and encouraging the disciples and, and kind of asking them questions to see if they'd got it, if they knew what was happening, what, what was going on. In, Matthew, in verse 15, uh, Jesus said to them, because they'd been talking about who Jesus was, um, and he sounded them out about it, and they, the disciples, one after another, all said, well, some say, you're Elijah, come back. Uh, others say, somebody else. Um, but in verse 15, Jesus said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So Peter was the, the one who put both feet in first, wasn't he, among, amongst the, the disciples. He was the bold one, the one that would speak speak out uh, first and he and God just showed him who Jesus was because they they didn't know who the Christ was they didn't expect the Messiah to be a, a carpenter somebody like them in not very posh clothing a respectable trade but they, they, they expected something a bit different when the Messiah came but it was revealed to Peter that Jesus was the Messiah. But you know, immediately, and, and Peter spoke on behalf of, of the disciples. Um, they, they didn't challenge that, they witnessed to that. There was, no, there was no argument about it. And Jesus spoke to them, and he gave, immediately, when, they, when Peter spoke that, that revelation, he, he gave a guarantee. He said to Peter, and to all the disciples, Peter spoke first, but it was to the disciples. And he said that, I will give you the, key, the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So he gave that guarantee immediately um, to, the, to the disciples. So Jesus was delegating the authority of the word to the disciples right from the start. Um, he, he set out the order and the governance of, of the early church. And I was reminded of uh, Kevin. I don't know if you're watching Kevin. Hello, Kevin. Um, but I was um, reminded of your vision, Kevin, the one about the, the sticks. And just reading from the uh, interpretation of that, um, the sticks represented ourselves in the church and as the needs in this world become more complicated, 
it will increasing, increasingly become more difficult for one person to handle any given area. The sticks are also representative of small groups of people from the church going out to minister in the community. This is confirmation of the direction of the church, is, how the church is going, going as we minister into every area of need, even if it's only to a small group of people. Um, there will be people dedicated in the church who will have a burden for outreach to a particular group of people in the community and the number of people involved will determine well, that will be determined by the size of the need and different ones will feel um, attracted to a particular area and be drawn to a particular area of need and God will raise those up um, those that he's chosen for, for different tasks and tr to be trained uh, and for them to train others up in, in the group. And you know, that just reminds me that, you know, God has delegated his authority in, um, to us. And it's time, you know, that, that we take a hold of God's word uh, and realize that God has delegated his authority to us um, to be witnesses for him. And to reach people. So we need revelation um, to take hold of the, the power of the word. The second, uh, the second thing that I saw was that when we respond to God, when we hear the word of God, um, we receive a job. So it's kind of following on from that. We receive a job and a guarantee that goes along with that job. Now, Brian often says, don't you, Brian? He says, he, he who gets the revelation gets the job. So, a saying that Brian, Brian often uses. And, you know, when we have a revelation of, of what God is asking us to do, you know, we, God gives us that job. He's not going to do it. God isn't going to do it. He delegates it to us to work it out. You know, of course, we're going to make mistakes. Um, but if our heart is right, then... You know, God works with us and God works everything together um, for our good. But we will receive a job and a, a guarantee that God is working with us. You know, God stands by us and he owns our actions and words when he delegates to us, so long as that is in response um, to his, his word. So... I mentioned when I when I started that you know Jesus never said anything unless it was necessary, and in Matthew chapter eighteen, so I read from Matthew chapter sixteen, and Jesus said, "Whatever you bind on earth um, will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven." But He said it again, and in Matthew chapter eighteen, and you know if He says something twice, then it's an important. It's an important thing, that principle that we need to, to work out in our lives. So we receive a job and a, and a guarantee, and breaking that down a little bit into three different areas. First area, we need to bind. We need to bind the works of the enemy. And Jesus repeated what he said to the disciples in Matthew 18, verse 18 to 20. It says, Assuredly, I say to you, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now that was, was in the context of if someone in the church offends you. Um, but it's, it's, Jesus broadened it out to that, um, that he has delegated his authority to us as, as he owns us. He's, he's bought us by, the, by his blood, and he owns us and delegates his authority to us and upholds that authority. And one of the uh, exposition, expositions of the Bible um, says, talks about, while, me, while ministers preach the word of Christ faithfully and in the government of the church strictly adhere to his laws, they may be assured that he will own them and stand by them and will ratify what they say and do so that it shall be taken 
as said and done by himself. And it says, talking about adhering to his laws, it says, clave non errante, the key not turning the wrong way. If we turn the key the right way, God will un un unlock um, his authority as we seek to do his word. I'm talking about binding the works of the enemy. You know, God has got a calling for people who are currently bound up. They, they probably don't realize it, but they're actually bound up into things which are just not important. Um, they're bound up by the deceit of the enemy into thinking those things are important and they don't need any more. But, you know, God says that we are, he knew us from the, from when we were in our, our mother's wombs and God has chosen people that are currently bound up but God is going to speak to them and he's given us the authority to, to bind up the works of the enemy. So we need to identify people that we sense are meant to be gods and we need to identify and bind up the works of the enemy in their lives. But he also said, didn't he, that we need to loose. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And we need to, to let loose the power of God in these days that we, we are living in. You know, we want to, we, we've been believing for some considerable time now, for the last couple of years perhaps, that, that a move of God is coming and as, as Brian shared earlier that it's going to come suddenly, I believe it's going to come some, suddenly when um, the power of God is released and uh, we take a hold of the word, we realise, we recognise that we are acting and speaking as God's ministers, he owns us, he stands by what we say, he's delegated that to us and you know, we need to let the power of, of God loose. That's in our, in a sense, yes, God is, it's God's timing, but we recognise God has shown us that it, it, this is, these are days in which he is going to move and we need to be loosing the power of God in, in these days. And so the third area, so we need to bind the power of the, the, the works of the enemy. Uh, we need to loose the power of God. As we, as we bind the, power, the works of the enemy, the power of the enemy, we need to loose the power of God. But the third area is we need to agree. We need to agree. And Jesus said in verse 19, of Matthew, I can't remember the chapter, sorry, I've, I was copy and paste error, um, but it says in Matthew chapter 19, here's a challenge, you, you, can, you can find the chapter, but it's verse 19. We need to agree, and Jesus said again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Chapter 18. Chapter 18. Okay. Great, thank you. I've got my notes a little bit wrong. Um, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Now, it says two or three. We could take that to mean the church because even if there's only two or three in the church, it's still, the, it's still a church. Um, but Jesus was saying where two or three, or where the church is in unity, and we're in, we agree, we're in unity concerning anything that we ask, it will be done. And God's word comes. You know, God knows how to guarantee something. It, it's a, a warranty that God has given that if we are in unity, if we agree on something, then it, it will be done. And I just felt that that's something that we need to, to take a hold of. 
Because sometimes we don't understand, do we, why God doesn't seem to answer prayer, why he sometimes perhaps it seems like he doesn't he doesn't heal. And Jesus didn't say anything except that it needed to be said. And I just have a feeling that we need to get a hold of what it means to to agree, you know, to be in unity. It's, it's one of the the principles of the, of the of our church um, that unity is essential um, part a part of the, the church. But I just felt that we need to get hold of uh, um, agreement in a new way, and the the power of that unity. If if we are in agreement, then God is going to to move. He's going to do what we ask for. If if we're doing it according to to what God is showing us. Do you know, and I, and I thought about the example of Jesus. Um, the Bible says that when Jesus was ministering in, in Nazareth, he couldn't do very many miracles because they knew who he was. They didn't believe he was the Christ. And it's, he could not do many miracles. Um, that's amazing, isn't it? That there needs to be agreement, there needs to be unity for the power of God to, to operate, for, the, for the, word, the guarantee that comes from the word of God um, to come to, to fruition. There has to be agreement. And I think, you know, God is, challenge, God is challenging us to, to take that on board, um, and to come into an agreement in, in kind of a, a new way that we take a hold of something, we own it, we all own it, we agree on it, and we see, we see God come to move. So that's what I have for this morning, short message, but I hope it's blessed you. Now God's word is going to work when we take a hold of it and we each one of us agree on the thing that we're asking for as, as we operate the word of God in, in our local community. Father, I just thank you for what you are wanting to do in these days, Lord God. Father, as we come through this time of, of lockdown, Lord God, and the, the stress and oppression that that has caused, Father, I just pray that you would use this time to draw people to yourself and I pray that your people, Lord God, would take a hold of your word. And that we would do as you said, Lord Jesus, and, and agree that we are believing for your, for, your, for your word to produce results. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So I'm the last one up again, so... I think we won't be seeing you on Sunday, but hopefully very soon as, as we get a bit more clarity, then we will be able to, uh, to be together again. So I give you a virtual hug. Bless you. Have a great week. Enjoy the, the sunshine. And I'll see you. We will see you on Wednesday evening if you're able to attend. Bless you. Amen.